How's it going everyone? My name is Alone Vot Wanderer and welcome back to Bioshock The Definitive Story, the series where we explore the main story of the original Bioshock game. Last time, we discussed the levels of Arcadia, Farmer's Market, and Fort Frolic, and you can find that video linked in the description below. Today, we will cover Hephaestus and Rapture Control. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Bioshock The Definitive Story Part 5. Jack arrives in Hephaestus and Atlas informs him that Ryan wields the genetic keys to Rapture, and if they can get that key, they'll both be able to get out of the city. With that in mind, it's time for Jack to head to Ryan's office and kill him. But this task won't be so easy, as Ryan's office is closed shut by an electromagnetic defense mechanism. Not all hope is lost, however, as several audio logs reveal the story of how a former engineer of Rapture, Kyberz, once tried to break through Ryan's gate in order to kill him. Another person Person, Anya and Estotter found out about Kyberz's plan and she too wanted to murder Ryan after her daughter became a little sister. Anya soon discovered that in order to dismantle the electromagnetic defense she had to generate a sympathetic overload in harmonic core number three in Rapture. Anya did not know what this meant so she sought out the employees at heat loss monitoring to uncover more information. So after finding this audio log, it was clear what Jack himself had to do in order to obtain access to Ryan. Ryan remarks that what Jack is trying to do is scientifically impossible, but Jack remains steadfast and heads to Hephaestus' core. Along the way, Jack picks up more audio logs which detail how Anya turned to Pablo Navarro, a maintenance worker in Hephaestus, to gather more information about unlocking Ryan's gate. Pablo knew that Kyberz was up to something in this regard, as on a couple of occasions, he snuck into Kyberz's workshop workshop and saw that he was building something. So, Pablo gave Anya directions to Kyberz' office in exchange for her sleeping with him. But before Anya could discover what Kyberz was doing, Kyberz turned her in to Ryan Splices as he thought she was a spy for Ryan himself. But as it turns out, they both wanted the exact same thing, Ryan dead. So in order to discover what Kyberz was up to, Jack heads to his workshop. Along the way, Jack picks up even more audio logs by Kyberz, which reveal how he once had a dream that gave him the idea as to how to unlock Ryan's office. Kyberz knew that Ryan's gate was powered by underwater volcanic vents, which was an unlimited source of energy that simply could not be turned off which is why Ryan is so intent that what Jack is trying to do is scientifically impossible. But Kyberz determined that if he could somehow overload the core control that powered the mag locks on Ryan's door, then he could get his way in. And how exactly could the core control be overloaded? Well, when Jack finds his way into Kyberz's office, he sees the casing for an EMP bomb. And there, the answer was revealed. All Jack had to do was complete the unfinished EMP bomb by finding the necessary components. Before Kyberz could do this himself, he was unfortunately killed by Ryan's splices. The EMP ingredients were as follows. Nitroglycerin, which can be found in Kyberz' office. R-34 lead shield wire stubs, which can be found inside Big Daddy's. And a half a can of ionic gel, which are located all around Hephaestus. Jack eventually finds all of these ingredients and builds the EMP bomb. And now all he has to do is place the bomb onto the core past geothermal control and activate it. Which, according to Kyberz's theory, will send the core into compensation mode, push power down the line, and try trigger the circuit breaker on Ryan's gate to get it open. So Jack heads down to Hephaestus core in order to finally fulfill Kyberz's plan. But when arriving at the core, Ryan tells Jack that Atlas will betray him, but nevertheless, Jack places the EMP onto the core, which does the following. With the core overloaded, Atlas tells Jack to activate the circuit breaker in front of Ryan's door to let him into his office. Splices and security bots are not enough to deter Jack at this stage, as he eventually manages to flip the circuit breaker, open Ryan's gate, and take the bulkhead into rapture control.
Jack arrives in Rapture Central Control and begins heading to Andrew Ryan himself. However, Ryan cuts Jack off, stating that while he cannot raise his hand against Jack, Jack is his greatest disappointment. Ryan then yells out to Atlas, saying that he will never have his city, and then activates the self-destruct mechanism for the entire city of Rapture. Panicked, Atlas urges Jack to head to Ryan and stop the self-destruct before Rapture is entirely finished. As Jack gets closer to Ryan's office, he finds a strange room with a bunch of paper clippings, photographs, and the words, Would You Kindly, written across the wall. Jack also finds several audio logs by Dr. Yisu Chong. The first one talks about Lot 111 for his client Fontaine Futuristics. Lot 111 was used on a baby who was only a year old. Another audio log details an interaction between Su Chong and that little boy. The little boy is playing with a puppy, and then Su Chong asks the boy to break the puppy's neck. The boy is clearly reluctant at first, but after Su Chong asks, break that puppy's neck, would you kindly? The boy proceeds to break the puppy's neck. Su Chong is happy with the result, but still unsure as to what all of that just meant, Jack finally reaches Andrew Ryan where the following scene plays. The assassin has overcome my final defense, and now he's come to murder me. In the end, what separates a man from a slave? Money? Power? No. A man chooses. A slave obeys. You think you have memories. A farm. A family. An airplane. A crash. And then this place. Was there really a family? Did that airplane crash? Or was it hijacked? Forced down. Forced down by something less than a man, something bred to sleepwalk through life until they are activated by a simple phrase spoken by their kindly master. Was a man sent to kill or a slave? A man chooses. A slave obeys. Come in. Would you kindly? Powerful phrase. Familiar phrase. Would you kindly? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly head to Ryan's office and kill the son of a bitch? Sit. Would you kindly? Stand. Would you kindly run? Stop! Turn. A man chooses. A slave obeys. With this, it's time to undertake our most important deep dive yet. Who is Jack? In the last episode, we covered the seemingly innocuous subplot of Jasmine Jolene, who was impregnated by Andrew Ryan. As discussed there, Frank Fontaine instructed Tenenbaum to pay Jolene a large amount of money in exchange for her unborn baby, which Jolene accepted. As it turns out, with the assistance of Dr. Yisu Chong, this baby fetus was nurtured to a full birth as it were, and it grew to be a year old. But thanks to Su Chong's genetic manipulation, the baby was subject to an extremely rapid growth. 
thanks to the aforementioned substance called Lot 111, which was likely created in combination with Adam. So at just one year old, the baby weighed 58 pounds and had the arrangement of muscles of a fit 19 year old. And in the most important twist of the game, this baby is revealed to be none other than the game's main protagonist, Jack. It is Jack who is the illegitimate child of Jasmine Jolene and Andrew Ryan, which the latter discovered eventually after he literally pieced together the photos of all the evidence and people involved. This is why Jack has been able to use the bathyspheres in Rapture all along, as he has a similar genetic structure to Andrew Ryan, being his son and all. And then on the wall was the phrase, would you kindly, written in large, bold, red text. This of course is another important piece of the puzzle. As implied by Ryan, throughout Jack's time in Rapture, Atlas had a bit of a habit of speaking that very phrase to Jack whenever he wanted him to go do something. From the moment he picked up that shortwave radio, right to when he headed to Ryan's office to kill him. This phrase acted as a form of mind control over Jack, which subconsciously forced him to do anything the speaker commanded. And it was thanks to Su Chong and also Tenenbaum that Jack was subject to such mental conditioning, with earlier tests detailing how Su Chong used the phrase to instruct Jack, as a small child, to break a puppy's neck. And all of this also explains how Jack ended up in Rapture in the first place. In 1958, right before Fontaine was killed by Sullivan's men, and when Jack was fully grown to the man he is now, Fontaine had Jack's memory wiped, imprinted with false memories of his parents and family home, and then smuggled out of Rapture as a sleeper agent to eventually be activated by Fontaine by using the phrase, would you kindly, to board a plane in 1960 that flew right over Rapture's lighthouse. So rather than somehow crashing into the ocean, Jack was actually instructed by a would you kindly note, seemingly from his parents, but actually from Fontaine, to open the gift containing a gun and hijack the plane at the precise coordinates. This then allowed the plane to crash into the water and to permit Jack entry into the underwater city of Rapture. So after killing Ryan, Atlas again uses the phrase, would you kindly, to get Jack to grab Ryan's genetic key and place it onto the central control terminal that can stop the self-destruct sequence. Upon doing so, however, and with Andrew Ryan finally disposed of, Atlas then contacts Jack one last time. previous deep dive of Fontaine, we reached the point in time in Fontaine's life when he died at the hands of Sullivan's men in a shootout. As it turns out, Fontaine did indeed fake his death. He did this because Ryan was closing in on him due to his smuggling and other businesses. And so to relieve the pressure and escape punishment, he had himself 
killed, and he then used his skills in theatre and grifting to assume the fake identity of Atlas. Of course, at the end of the day, Fontaine still wanted complete control over Rapture, which meant he needed to get Andrew Ryan out of the way. But as you remember, Ryan was protected behind his sophisticated gate and security controls, so those needed to be broken through first, and it was no easy task. The first way Fontaine attempted to do this after faking his death was re-emerging as Atlas, a simple Irish fisherman, family man, and freedom fighter. With this more trustworthy identity, Fontaine began to slowly win over Rapture's poorer citizens, who were still disenfranchised by Ryan and his treatment of them. Atlas gave these citizens supplies, advice, and most importantly, hope. Hope that things would eventually change. And as covered in an earlier deep dive, this all eventually led to the civil war against Ryan, which completely decimated Rapture. And even with Fontaine Futuristics now in Ryan's hands, Atlas was still able to produce plasmids thanks to his secret production lab, which enabled him to build another army of splicers, who wreaked havoc on Rapture and entirely destabilized the city. But Ryan was not going to go down so easily. Given that he still had the genetic key to Rapture and thus complete control, Ryan shut down the entirety of the city, closed down the bathospheres, secured himself within his offices and controlled the splices in the city by distributing pheromones through the air ventilation system. So this is when Fontaine was trapped and had no other choice but to activate his second plan, Jack, his trustworthy, mentally susceptible sleeper agent and, in the end, assassin. Fontaine, or Atlas, activated Jack on the surface to arrive at Rapture and then controlled him throughout the entirety of the game to reach Ryan's headquarters, break through his security, kill him, and then use Ryan's genetic key to hand complete control of Rapture over to Fontaine himself. Jack was Fontaine's backup plan, but it was the one that proved to be the most successful in Fontaine's entire endeavor to take control over Rapture. So after the big reveal, Fontaine sends bots after Jack in order to kill him. But out of nowhere, a cute little sister appears to guide Jack to a secure secret location. And then, when escaping through a vent, Jack falls and is knocked unconscious. Thank you for watching this episode of Bioshock The Definitive Story. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Your support means a lot. Also, give a big thank you in the comments below to the main contributors of The Definitive Story who are appearing on the screen right now. They all helped immensely with the script, as did Bioshock's wiki site run by fandom, which is linked in the description below. So until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer. Please take care of yourself, and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.